Let's continue our introduction to OpenMP in small bytes. My name is Christian Terboven from RWTH Aachen University. After we learned about what tasks are and what tasking is in the previous video, in this video I'd like to put the focus on tasking and scoping. That means the management of the data environment in the presence of explicit task constructs. So why do we have to deal with that in a separate topic? Well, to some extent, tasks in OpenMP follow the same rules with respect to data scoping that we already learned about. So that means out variables of automatic storage location. That is a term from the C and C++ standard and that refers to local variables. That means variables that are declared within the extent of a task are private. Remember, a private variable is a variable that's present, that's what we learned so far, for each thread. And now in the context of tasks, that means a private variable within a task means there's one instance of this variable per task. Similarly, the rules with respect to static and global variables still applies. That means those are shared. Remember, a shared variable is a variable that's present only once. It's shared by all threads. And in the context of tasking, it's shared by all tasks. So what is different? I think I explained it briefly already. When you schedule a task, or sorry, when a task is encountered, the runtime has two choices. The task can be executed immediately or it can be deferred. That means execution is deferred and the task will be executed at some point later, possibly by a different thread. And this means, or this poses the requirement that the task has access to all its data that it needs for a correct execution. And this is why private variables in the enclosing context in many cases might already be destroyed because the scope has left or might have changed its value. And this is why so uh, this is why we in OpenMP introduced the rule that these private variables will not continue to be private within a task, but instead will become first private within this task. First private within a task means there's a new instance of this variable and the value of this private per task instance is initialized with the value of the variable at the, or the corresponding variable at the time the task is created. So that means, yeah, basically the task captures its environment, the environment of all private variables so that it can still access those variables when it will be executed later on by a different thread. All variables that are shared within the enclosing context remain to be shared by the task. So that means the task might get yeah, technically a reference or at least a pointer or something like that to get hold of that variable, but they remain to be, or they remain shared. So they're continues to be only one uh, presence, one instance of each shared variable. There's one exception of this rule. So let me rephrase the rule. All variables that are shared yeah, in the enclosing context of a task remain shared. Everything else will become first private for the task. So that means there will be a new private variable that is initialized with the value of the variable at the time the task is created. If you don't want that, you have to make use of the shared private, first private, and that means the scoping clauses to change this default behavior. So the exception from the rule is that orphaned task variables are first private by default. And we have an example of that at the very end of this video. So let's take a look at what these rules mean in an example code and I have to at this word of warning, this is an artificial example. The code doesn't do anything meaningful. Its sole purpose is to demonstrate all the ugly corner cases of scoping with respect to tasks. So what do we have here? This is a C code. We have a routine foo. And uh, in line one, you see the declaration of the variable A. It's declared outside of the variable of the function foo, that means it's a variable of file scope, and that means it's a static variable. Within foo, we have b and c, 
both have some value. We have a parallel region, in there we have a variable d, which is initialized with a value, and then we have a task in which we have e. So what I'm going to explain now is the scope of all these variables a, b, and c within the task. So that means what is its value and scope. That means how many of those variables do we have within the task. Let's start with variable a. And I guess it's simple because I said it already. a is declared here outside of foo. That means it's declared at file scope. The C and C++ languages make those variables a static variable, even without the static modifier given here. So it's a static variable. That means, I explained it on the previous slide, A remains to be shared. Static variables are always shared. That means there's only one A for all threads and all tasks with a value of 1. What about B? Let's take a closer look. B is declared within foo, so it's a variable of automatic storage location. We encounter a parallel region. It would be shared within the parallel region because it's declared before the parallel region. But here we have the private clause, so that means B is private. There's one instance of B per thread. Now we encounter the task construct in line 8. And that means within the task, there is a new B for each task that is created because B will be made first private by the rule that I just explained. So here we have one B per thread and here we have in addition one B per task and there's exactly one task created by each thread that encounters the task construct in line 8 which is each thread within the team that's executing the parallel region. What is the difference between B and C? I get a, gave a remark on that already. So C is declared before the parallel region. There's no scoping clause. That means it remains shared. And that means C is shared within the parallel region. And in consequence, it remains shared. So there's only one C that's accessible by all threads and tasks under the name C. Let's look at D. If you understood the rules, that's simple. Otherwise, I can understand that it's really it requires uh, some exercise to apply those rules to a uh, code like that. So D is declared within the parallel region. In consequence, it's a private variable, one instance per thread, and that makes it first private in the task, one instance per task. Remember, first private means the value is captured. What about E? E is declared within the task, so that means it's not visible and existing Outside of uh, the individual tasks, there's one task per thread within the parallel region and each task has its own E and that makes it a private variable. If you don't want to work with the code and think about all those rules all the time, there's a hint. You can add the default none clause to the parallel region and that will makes the compiler force you to think about each variable. And that means you have to specify a scope in, um, clause for each variable that is referenced within the parallel region. That means you would have, in this particular course, code, you would have to provide a scoping clause for A. That means you have to say shared A. And also a scoping clause for C. That means it's, uh, you would have to write a shared C in order to achieve the behavior that I just described. If you put the default none, you have to declare the scoping for each variable. Otherwise, the compiler will give you an error message. I think I explained the values already. A remains shared, so it's A, B, ah, that's interesting. Is zero or undefined? Why is that? I hope you figured that out because B is made private here. Private means a new copy per thread if private occurs at the parallel region. But that private copy is uninitialized. Uninitialized means it has an undefined value. However, many implementations initialize private scalar private variables with a value of zero. This is why I wrote B, as a B to be zero or undefined. C is shared. D is captured as the first private variable 
and E is defined within the task construct. In consequence, you can see the resulting values. Let me also add a few remarks on the lifetime of private or first private variables. So let's start at the parallel region first. What do we have here on the left hand side? We have a parallel region and the first private clause. I has been declared before the parallel region to have the value of pi. I said it before. So first private at the, as a, at the parallel region means we have one private copy per thread and in it's a, it is each private copy is initialized with five. When are the initialized, uh, sorry, the private copies being destroyed? Here, at the very end of the parallel region. After the parallel region, there's only the original i. And if you mod would modify i within the parallel region by any thread or even all threads, you would only modify the new, meaning the private instances or the first private instances technically, and that means afterwards, yeah, the original, in OpenMP terms, we call it the corresponding i, still has a value of 5. How does it look like with tasks? Well, we still assume, oh sorry, uh, we still, we have a similar pattern as uh, to what we have learned um, in our first encountering with tasks. So we have a parallel single, and that means we execute the parallel region with only one single thread here. We have one variable um, i, it's declared within the extent of the single construct, so there's only one i. This i will be gone here at the end of the single construct. This is the end of the block scope. And within the task we have a first private copy of i. That means another copy of i with the value of 5. Yeah, it's not, it's, it is initialized because of first private. And this additional copy will be destroyed here at the end of the task. That means at the time um, because the scope, uh, sorry, the block ends. However, if you think about timing, this i might already be gone because a signal has been completed. There's an implied barrier. And this is where the threads are waiting for all the tasks to be completed. So because the task might have been deferred. So one thread might encounter the i, encounter the task, defer the execution, complete the single. This i will be, sorry, this i will then be gone. And only later this task will be executed which has a first private copy of i. And then it will be destroyed again here at the end of the implied barrier when the task is completed. And this is what I referred to earlier on as uh, the intent of the OpenMP standard with this first private rule that the task kind of captures its environment. Good. Finally, often task variables. So if you're not a C++ programmer or if you're not using references, you can probably ignore this. Think about the following situation. We are passing arguments by reference. Often task, often task generating construct. Often means the task generating construct is separated from the parallel region. And with separated, I mean it occurs in a different function or in a different compilation unit, for example. Here we have the task body function. We have to generate the task code. Yeah? And here that we have the pragma OP task, which calls task body. X is passed as a reference. Now the question is, what is the scoping of X? That means how many do we have? And I said it before, often task variables are first private by default, unless they are shared. But due to the call by reference, it might or might not be shared. So we don't know. Let me illustrate that. Think of this parallel region, which has an X, sorry, an Y and the Z variable, and Y is private. We call generate task with Y private, and then with Z, it's shared. And we have to have a consistent semantic, yeah? that means what is the value of y here, depending, yeah, or in the case of the execution, depending on if there's a private or not. 
Yeah, the code has always to be correct. However, if the generate task function occurs in a separate compilation unit, then the compiler doesn't have any knowledge about that. And this is why often task variables are first private, just to have a um, rule that the compiler has to follow and it always applies. This was an excursion on scoping with respect to tasks. Uh, it's an important topic and I can understand this is sometimes problematic or sometimes uh, complicated. I believe complicated is a better word. However, after you get used to it, that's my personal experience, but also the experience from many courses, um, you get a good understanding of how scoping in OpenMP works.